out. Cholera has no borders. As an engineering PhD student, I learned how in Haiti there was no cholera for 100 years until the 2010 earthquake. After the disaster, cholera spread through the country, causing outbreaks and deaths to this day. But Haiti's not alone. There are 5 million cases of cholera every year in 41 countries all around the world. And this causes over $3 billion in treatments, in lost productivity, and in human cost. Cholera also takes seven days to detect in the water, from the time somebody goes out to the water source, gets the sample, brings it back, and the lab performs enrichment of the sample, TCBS streaking, misogyny broth isolation, polymerase chain reaction, serology, and a secondary confirmation. This process is long, and it takes years of training to know how to do. But what's worse is that communities are left vulnerable to the water that they drink, that they bathe in, and that they cook with. So I took my PhD research and technology, and I started Omnivis, where we put the power of the lab in the palm of your hand. We detect four cholera in under 30 minutes, in water, anywhere in the world. We are revolutionizing disease detection. And we do this with an easy-to-use platform. We have a handheld hardware device, a disposable test kit, and a smartphone, and they work seamlessly together to detect cholera accurately and affordably. The hardware acts like the portable laboratory. And inside, we have heating units to start DNA amplification, and we have a series of lenses that miniaturize a microscope to see down to the nanoparticle level. We also have the test kit, where inside we have reagents that are embedded to perform DNA amplification. And when the test kit and the hardware come together, what happens is we amplify the cholera toxin gene. And in amplification, DNA strands grow longer, making the solution more viscous in nature. And that viscosity change is exactly what we're measuring. We have two pending patents on this technology, and we are more sensitive than the status quo. We also have the smartphone that's able to track with the proprietary algorithms of viscosity and send alert notifications. Move to phone demo. If I'm a field worker, I take this entire system with me out to a water source. I fill my test kit with a water sample, and I launch the app where I've put the test kit inside of a heating unit to initiate DNA amplification. So DNA amplification is occurring, and inside, the solution's becoming more viscous in nature. And this is happening over a 28-minute period. Next, I move the test kit to the imaging region to look at my sample. When I'm imaging, I take a video, and that's how we back out the viscosity change that's occurring. And we do an analysis with our proprietary algorithms. From that, we see if the water is clean or dirty, here being clean. And we look at the data to see where and when cholera has been de detected. Move to the web page. We also have a web portal that this all sends to, so an NGO can see where cholera has been found and when. And they can gather this data and bring in healthcare supplies to the area in need. Back to presentation. When a solution's contaminated, it also looks like this, but I couldn't bring cholera to the TechCrunch stage today. Solutions that move really, really slow are viscous in nature and therefore contaminated, whereas clean solutions move very, very fast because there is no viscosity change. I inspired my PhD advisors to join me as founders of Omniviz, and our team brings expertise in biotechnology, uh, consumer electronics, global health to come together. Rapid tests, like, uh, rapid tests are very, very easy to use, but they are highly inaccurate. Whereas cell culture is expensive to use, but highly accurate. 
We do a B2B sales where our hardware is a single time sale and our disposable test kit creates our recurring revenue because it is single time use. And to date, we have five letters of intent from some of the biggest players in cholera, like Doctors Without Borders. But we're not stopping there. Cholera is a $2 billion market for water detection and surveillance. But Omnivis means to see everything. And by changing the chemistry in our disposable test kit and using our IP, we can detect for many different pathogens in many different markets. We are mobilizing the lab. We ask today for NGOs, water quality experts, and research hospitals to visit omnivistech.com because we are rapidly detecting pathogens and we are saving lives. Thank you. Judges. How are you going to, what's your plan on selling to NGOs? I'll hand that to Lynn. As she mentioned earlier, we already have five letters of intent from the biggest players in the market. ICDDRB is the gold standard. They are the world's first and largest cholera hospital. And being partnered with them is having the best smelling scratchy sticker that we can have on our company. Um, because of them, we've also been partnered with Doctors Without Borders, which own 15% of the landscape. We are also working with Emerging Pathogens Institute in Haiti and have many more letters of intent that we will follow up with. And typically, though, the, the time scale on, on being able to get paid uh, from an NGO is quite long, right? So what's your, what's your path to actually getting your first check? So the other end of things is we sell to water testing laboratories, and that's a direct sale. That's a direct exchange where we get that money on the front end. But yes, the RFPs, they will have a longer turnaround time, but the fact that we do have these sales from a water testing lab is helping keep us solid. Feels like a really meaningful business that you're building, um, so I really appreciate that. Uh, just sort of building on this last question, what are the unit economics? How much, how much are they paying per test, and, and what does that mean for your costs? So a large, sorry, a small company such as Emerging Pathogens Institute, they're spending about $100,000 a year currently. So we already know that we're hitting below what their budgets already have. A medium-sized company like Doctors Without Borders have about $500,000 for a budget. And UNICEF spends $1 to $6 million per country per year. I, I like your tagline, the power of the lab in the palm of your hand. I think that makes it really clear. Um, with tests, often you have to go through clinical trials. Uh, where do you stand in terms of, uh, do the, are those necessary for this area, and what kinds of trial accuracy have you already seen? Right, so because this is water testing, we do not go through the FDA or CE mark approval process. But because we want to build trust in our communities, what we do is we work with ICDDRB, that largest cholera hospital in the world, because they hold the gold standard. So we test with them to get that stamp of approval on everything that we do with our product. Up to date, we have done hundreds and hundreds of tests, bl double-blinded studies on our tests to look at accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity. We're 94.4% accurate. We are 97.5% specific and 93.1% sensitive. Are you testing just for cholera right now, or can you detect everything in the water and say this, this water is clean? Because that's a much bigger problem. Because 800, probably about 800 million people do not have access to clean water. Right, exactly. So what we first do is we're doing cholera because that is one that has particular symptoms with it, and it's very chlorine resistant, and it's a market that hasn't been tapped. But we are looking at many other water diseases. In the laboratory space, we've already looked at E. coli, the hemorrhagic kind, which is the O157H7 strain. And we've also looked at typhoid, two really, really big water pathogens. So we want to have that specific result because that also changes the specific treatment of water in particular cases, like cholera being chlorine resistant. But we are growing definitely within that region and then going into human health after. How did you size the market to two billion? We looked through a bunch of UNICEF documents, as well as the Dove project, et cetera, and we've done a lot of primary market research. We've gone out to the field, gone to Haiti, gone to Kenya, gone to Bangladesh, talked to well over 200 people face to face to start sizing this market and sizing the need. But are you, are, are, is that two billion in displacement of existing services that are being provided for water testing, or is it 
growing market based on the ability to distribute this broadly? It, the market itself is the two billion that's currently being used for water detection and surveillance of cholera alone. Is, is there a dominant player in that market today? Right now, it would be that laboratory testing, that seven-day turnaround time in a lot of countries only have maybe two water testing facilities. So that means that there are a lot of people that are not even getting served where a water NGO could serve those people because they can go out into the field. Our mechanism, it takes 47 minutes of training time beginning to end, and we have done this study very thoroughly in Bangladesh. So if that two billion is, how much is actually services as opposed to actual hardware and equipment? Um, so the surveillance portion is the smaller portion, and the actual testing probably takes up about 80% of that cost. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, the disposables and the tests. I got to imagine distribution is relatively difficult for this product. Like even if you get it to the NGO, the NGO then getting it to the site, the site actually using it, and then getting the replaceable tests over time into that market are really difficult. How are you overcoming that? Yeah, sure. Um, so what we do is that's why our partners are so important to us. Doctors Without Borders has a distribution network. They are the experts in that. They know how to get that out to the field. What we do is we respond to those RFPs. We're the one that gives them the million test kits or the thousand hardware devices. They go through their distribution channels to get it to the right player, the right field worker, the right scientist, the right doctor. And so that is where our partners and our customers are incredibly important. You talked about porting the IP to blood, so that this change in viscosity that you measure, mm -hmm. how difficult is that? So far we've done HIV and malaria in blood and seen great low levels of detection and not seeing issues. There will be more sample processing in the, the chip itself, but we know if we need to look at the white blood cell side, if we need to look at the plasma side, if we need to look at the red blood cell side, but we have a paper coming out in the next few months on doing blood testing in the system with malaria. Exciting. Other questions? And do, do you have units currently deployed? Um, we're actually wrapping up our last pilot study in Bangladesh at the end of this month. And, and, and how then. is utilization on the existing units that are out? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? What does utilization look like? Like, uh, uh, like yeah, how frequently are these being used? Like how many tests per unit are, are yeah. you rolling through the site? So the tests themselves are disposable, so they're a one-time use. Depending on the size of our partner, we're expecting um, like a small partner will do, you know, a low end thousands of tests a month, and then it scales up. And that really changes depending on how large the country is and the complexity of getting to those locations. Final question? All right, give it up for Omnivid!